Now we've created all the parts, we can look at assembling the simple mechanism. So it's going to look something like what we can now see on a screen. So I've just put part of the assembly together to show you how it's going to work. So you can see that as you turn the handle, it turns the crank and that pushes them pistons up and down. We just put one in for that example. And I'm on the assembly tab at the bottom here. So if we go back to the part studio, you can see what we'd created before. And you know that in here you can't move anything around. That's just where you're creating the models. So in the assembly tab, if I delete everything that we had in to start with, so it's very similar to the, it looks very similar to the part studio but you've got the parts list and the feature list all together again on the left hand side so I'm just deleting everything out so once we move across to the assembly tab this is what you'll be presented with I'm gonna insert part by part what I want to put together so I'm just gonna start with the casing and part two so I'm gonna click on the casing move my mouse over into the assembly window and click to drop it in then before I move on I'm gonna right click on the casing and I'm going to fix it, which means that won't move around. That is my fixed item that everything else will build on. Okay, my crank then I'll push into here and I'll also put my handle in to start with as well. So I'll put those three parts in and I'm going to click my green tick. I can always go back into insert more parts later on. So the first thing that we want to do is put the crank into position. So we know that this end pokes out ready for the handle to attach on and the other end will line up flush. So we're going to use a cylindrical mate, okay? We've got cylindrical mate there for that cylinder to go in. In fact, I'm going to change my mind. Cylindrical mate would allow it to move left and right and rotate round. We don't want it to move left and right. So we're actually just going to use the revolute mate, which is the same, but instead of moving left and right, it's only going to let it revolve. And this surface here, you can see as I hover over the cylinder in here, I can pick the left side, the center, or the right side. That's always important to remember, and it does impact the way you build parts as well. So I'm going to click on the right-hand side, and that's going to marry up with a crank. And as I hover over this cylinder, you can see the middle, the left, or the right. I want it to marry up with the right there. Okay, and then that's locked into position. So those points now are locked with one another. And I'm going to finish that with a green tick. I don't want to put any Revolute mates in for anything else at the moment, so I can close that down. You can see now that feature, the first Revolute mate that I've done, is on my features list if I ever wanted to go back and edit it. And you can see now as well, if I drag this, I'm just clicking with my left mouse button and dragging, you can see that I can rotate the crank round in position. So the next part we want is to put the handle into place. So again, I'm just going to hide the case for this. So I'm going to click on the eye next to the case in the parts list. So I can only see the crank. Now, if we look at this cylinder with the square on, the center of that cylinder is going to marry up with the center of the cylinder on this side of the handle. So we're going to match them to start with. And we're going to use a fixed mate. So once they're together, they're fixed. So if one rotates, the other moves exactly the same. Okay, so fixed, which is, if I can find it, that one there, oh, fastened mate, sorry. Click on fastened mate. I'm going to zoom in to make sure we've got the right bit. So it's the left side of that cylinder. And then we're going to zoom in onto here to this cylinder. And we want the right side of that cylinder there. Okay, so you can see that we've fastened those together. So they're fixed. Right. We're going to finish that fastened mate. Now, as we rotate one, the other rotates two. The only thing we didn't check, if we're being really pedantic, is that the square on the inside lined up or not. So what I'm going to do is going to hide part two. I'm going to select this top edge of here. So using a parallel mate, I'm going to select the center of that top edge. And then I'm going to unhide part two and hide part three so that I can now select the center of this face here okay center of face it's not going to let me do that at the moment so i've now selected that one i need to go back into part five sorry not three as i said before and we're going to line that up on there, making sure it's a new selection so you can see you've got part two and part five together and we can tick that so now we know them squares will line up perfectly okay moment of truth to check that's worked we're going to unhide everything 
I'm going to put shaded with hidden edges on and we can have a look and you can see that it looks like there's one square which means they must line up perfectly if they didn't you'd see multiple lines there so turn on shaded again and you can see now hopefully if I use this cube in the corner it'll save us a little bit of time I rotate the handle round and you can see it's rotating the crank so so far so good I'm just going to leave that off at an angle for now I'm now going to go ahead and put the three piston heads in so I'm going to click on a piston head I can click to drop one one more and a third okay so select it from the menu and drop it into place okay done we now want these to be able to move up and down we don't need them necessarily to revolve round because they'll be connected with these shafts they won't be able to revolve round so we're going to use this slider mate we're going to go over the cylinder and click the bottom to line up with this cylinder in here the bottom of that okay and that one will pop into place and we can click tick next one and if you don't tick here tick on the other one that pops up it gives you another slider option straight after so bottom of this one zoom in the bottom of this one here again tick this option that one stays there for your next one we can put our third one in so the bottom and the bottom of this one they're all connected we can click the tick and we can close that slider we don't need a fourth one we've actually put a fourth cylinder in there that we can delete so just left click on that and press delete on my keyboard we're now going to go ahead and start inserting these arms okay so if i put one arm in two arms and three arms in okay we can start connecting these together and again these are going to be more fixed they need to rotate round and the central axes of the bar and the hole need to stay connected but they don't need to slide so we're going to use revolute mate and it's important to think what you want them to do before you pick the fastening type that you need so I've finished with the parts list we're going to select revolute mate and we're going to start with this bar up inside here so if I hide the case in it might make it a little bit easier for us to see so we want the center of that bar up here to be our first connection okay so I've selected the center of that bar and I'm going to select the center of this hole and they're going to line up okay if I click on the tick on the small one here it's just for that revolute it allows me to do the next one so center of this bar with the center of that bar and be really careful to make sure you select the right bits the center of that one and the center of this one to connect okay oh, I've deselected that other so I better go and select it again there we go okay so we've put all three of those bars onto the piston heads and at the moment they are actually only attached onto the piston head and they're fixed to the center of that now on these next ones because it's not necessarily connecting in the center we now need to use a different kind type of mate because we want it to be able to move left and right to position itself with the piston correctly so we're going to use the cylindrical mate okay so cylindrical mate we're going to find it doesn't really matter if it's a left or right we're going to go for the center and then we're going to go for the center of this and because it's a cylindrical mate it will move itself to the right position okay click tick on a small one i nearly made the mistake of doing it on the top it's not the end of the world if you do but it makes it easy and not doing that just yet so center of the hole center of the bar tick next one center of the hole center of the bar and click tick and you can see it drags them pistons into position if we unhide the casing now what we'll hopefully see is as we rotate the handle round and this is a big moment of truth unhide the casing as we rotate this round now we get all of them pistons moving up and down okay so we've got our first kind of assembly with a bit of an animation feature going on the nice thing about this and the reason that you might choose to do it in your portfolio is it's great for testing so we can screenshot to see if it's working like we know it's working there the pistons are not going too low and as they get to the highest point they're not coming out of that casing either so it's actually working so our dimensions are kind of working at the moment if we look at it square on and i'm going to go to hidden edges visible we're now going to rotate it around and we can really try and see what's going on here 
but you can see now that bar this bar here I'm looking at is connecting with this piston head and it's cutting into the edge so if we keep rotating the handle round you can see it's cutting quite severely into that edge so we need to go and customize the design within the piston head so that there's not a collision there okay and you can probably see that as well if we rotate up this way as we're rotating the handle round, you can see that they're overlapping here you could screenshot that put that into your portfolio go and make a development based on that testing that you've done through CAD okay that's a really nice feature of CAD to allow that testing but there is your assembled simple crank and piston mechanism good luck with that